I found one of the most interesting NFT projects that I've ever seen. I've been in the space for right around a year now, maybe a little bit over, and I've been trading Ethereum NFTs, Wax NFTs, and most recently Solana NFTs. And the communities that surround these NFTs, while very, very interesting and dynamic, some of them are just extremely special, and Cubus Collective is one of them. Now, if you've been trading NFTs for any time at all, you'll know that people are always looking for alpha now alpha is like the information that you can get around another nft project that will allow you to make a decision on buying or selling it or holding it based on news that you may not have directly heard from the project maybe you're not even a holder of this project and it's a private community and there's an announcement in this community about an upcoming update a big feature release that might change the entire price action of an NFT and the way it's currently trading. That would allow you to make a decision whether or not you may want to potentially invest in this NFT. Outside of the people that are kind of committed to making these calls in alpha groups or alpha DAOs, what's in it for you? Why would you share this information? Why take time out of your day to actually make a post that would influence the other community members to make decisions that would not be from a selfish place. Well, typically people do it for a number of different reasons like clout, reputation, maybe to pump their own bags. But is there really any setups with reward mechanisms that make you or incentivize you to post this alpha content, to actually go out and find out about it and share it with your community? Well, that's one thing Cubus Collective is doing right. So in order to put it more elegantly, let's just read the product. Cubus Collective is a community-driven portfolio management protocol built on the Solana blockchain. The protocol facilitates the crowdsourcing of data and alpha in order to keep holders appraised of noteworthy developments in their holdings, as well as new NFTs worth minting. It also includes a suite of custom-built tools to easily manage your portfolio, all integrated into one clean and user-friendly dashboard. Now, there's a bunch of portfolio management tools out there, so there's a bunch of competition for that, but the noteworthy alpha and reward system is really where this protocol shines. Contributor rewards each week, the, the Cubus <laughs> reward pool is funded using a percentage of the mint and the proceeds in USDC, plus the protocol's native Cubus token. Cubus members react to an important posts and in the Discord, and contributors earn their share of the rewards pool for that week. The Cubus Collective Protocol will keep this community incentive fund seated with at least $5,000 USDC per week. And if we take a look at the white paper here, it goes into some details around how this works. The Cubus Collective will have a community incentive fund in order to maintain regular payouts. The fund will be seated with 20% of the proceeds from the Mint, continuously receive 25% of the royalties of the secondary markets and a weekly allocation of the Cubus token. And they talk a little bit about the rewards pool and how the USDC minimum per week is guaranteed for the first six months following a sold out mint, which we did get a sold out. So there's a bunch of variables that come into play with maybe how much of the residual sales or you know the revenue from secondary market sales come in. But between the seeding of the sold out mint, we can see that there's six months guaranteed of this USDC payout. So as long as you're in the community, meaning that you hold one of these NFTs, you can contribute and potentially get some of this share of the rewards pool, which is really, really cool. In addition to that, everybody that's competing for these are trying to put out the best type of content that they can for their slice of the pie, which means the alpha is usually very, very good and vetted. And I'll show you what I mean. So if you jump into their Discord as a member, you'll see that it looks a lot different than the typical Discords or alpha servers that you may be in. First of all, they have this very, very dynamic use of threads, okay? There's a bot called Picasso that actually shows you the trending threads in each of these categories on the left. Now, these can also be accessed by scrolling up and looking at the specific topics, which are done in chronological order, but this keeps track of it based on the amount of votes 
that they got. Or this little emote here, this Cubist coin emote, this is the way that a contributor can actually mark a topic as valuable. And it also is a direct correlation of how much of that USDC reward pool gets distributed. So if you, you have a write-up and you get some of these Cs, you actually get a payout based on that that's done every week. It's a really, really cool system. So in a normal Alpha Discord, I'm part of a, a, a an Alpha Discord called Pet Air, and I really, really love these guys. It's an awesome community, but it's a typical structured Alpha group, right? If you're looking for something specific, you can use the search function at the top, like we can look for primates, for instance. That's one of the, the upcoming selections. Um, nfts that is uh coming up with a mint and you can look to see what people are talking about you know some of them are talking about selling their whitelist tokens some of them are talking about the actual alpha around it but if you're looking for a proper project write-up you're probably going to find something in cubus now we can look to see here and there's a primates article primates will this brand survive primates the next supreme both of these are have quite a bit of rewards tacked to them. And you can look to see all of the information on these two threads. And if you find value in it, you can drop a C to make sure that this contributor is rewarded. Now, this doesn't give your money away by any chance. This is a voting mechanism that allows this payout that's already set to happen to be divided based upon all of these contributors that add value. Now, there's some different ranking systems and stuff like that, like the how many contributions you can do, as well as how many NFTs that you actually hold that may change the valuation of how you get rewarded. But some of that is for the Cubis tokens itself, not necessarily this USDC reward. So outside of actually owning an NFT, there's nothing special you have to do to contribute or take part in this ecosystem, right? All you have to do is start posting. So as a member, you could verify your role in the Discord. You could come in here and you can actually write up an article. You just go to the given thing like general, okay? And then you press plus and you can start using the create thread command and just start writing a thread. You can title it and you can write within it. People can comment on it and react to it. And you can do the same thing. You can find these articles and actually react to them if you get value. So. I wrote a couple of articles already. These articles are things that maybe you are not necessarily an expert on, but that you just can contribute, something that has value. If you hear about something in another Discord, or you know about something based on your own research, or there's just an opinion piece that you want to post about something specific, a topic that is relevant to these threads, you can post it. And if people find value in it, they're going to give you C, which is really, really cool. So I wrote a couple of articles here. I have been contributing to play to earn investment threads for a long time, right? I've been in, in, investing in play to earn. I've been doing videos about play to earn. I'm not necessarily an expert on it, but I have a lot of experience in it. So I wanted to do a post based on how I felt and some of the experiences that I've had in the recent projects that I've invested in, as well as the market conditions. And I already got some feedback as well as some rewards for posting this article. And it was really, really cool. For actual article writing, you'd be surprised, but I have to go to the chiropractor a couple times a week to treat a neck injury that I have. And I load up Google Docs on my phone and I hit the voice, the, the narrate, and I just start talking about something that I'm thinking about out loud. I come home and I compile it into different thoughts and I post it, or I'll see a video. Like I saw a video from Alex Becker that I thought was really, really interesting. A lot of people don't like Becker. I love his humor to tell you the truth, but he's been dropping some knowledge bombs and he put together a video that made a lot of sense and I wanted to talk about it. So I posted and I got a reward for it already. So a community member found value in this post and that's what's so important about this entire thing, because you could find value in other people's posts. They can find value in yours and everybody is incentivized to post good info. So you get some really, really juicy stuff. And finally, one of the other dynamic things I thought was so interesting about this entire project is the prediction game. So there's a betting protocol that they have that allows you to bet Solana tokens, your own Solana tokens money about the predictions of how upcoming NFT projects will perform. Now, I don't know if you're a gambler. I'm not much of a gambler, but I think it's interesting to be able to use this dynamic to hedge against Mint, and I'll talk about that. But the coolest thing about this is 
you can get a quick summary of the general community sentiment around a project and how they think it will perform in Mint. And if you're not an expert, but you don't have a whole lot of know-how when it comes to navigating whether or not a price will do well or not what not so well in a project you can look at some of these predictions and see statistically what they look like at these polls that essentially people are doing and some people put their money where their mouth is which is means they even have more conviction well typically they could just be degenerates but you, you get my drift so for instance, Reckless Raccoon Club, 24 hours. This is a project that's going to be minting coming up. And they want to know if you think the Reckless Raccoon Club floor will be below 5 Solana. This prediction is for the target price, different from the mint price, which is 2 Solana, after a 24-hour period on secondary market. Now, you can look the way the polls have gone, and you can just go with the flow. You might know something about Reckless Raccoons that I don't. You know, I don't know a whole lot about the project. I can go read articles that may have been posted here in Cubist. I can go looking in the different discords to see what people, I can use the soul decoder tool to see about uh, market sentiment, which I've, I've talked about in the last video, which if you haven't watched that video, by the way, you should definitely do it. But all in all, you can use a number of different resources to try to find out whether or not these statistics on this poll are correct. Or you could do like I usually do and just look at the market sentiment and participate in what you think based on the entire community sentiment. Now, I usually go with what they are and I've already researched this project, but the only reason I'm clicking on them right now is to show you how it works. So you can actually look at this too. This is a little bit more dynamic. What do you think about if the floor will be after one hour on secondary market mint price too? So if we're looking at the general community sentiment here, everybody thinks it's going to be lower, right? So if if you look at the percentage here most people think it's going to be choice three which is between two and 2.5 solana i actually think it's going to be a little bit less than that just due to the way the market is right now so i'm going to vote lower than that and it actually keeps track of your votes so the amount of cubist nfts that you hold actually give you reward multipliers for these polls specifically it says your own nfts at the latest snapshot give you two times votes and earning for this poll not to be confused with the actual usdc earning okay these are for cubist tokens that you both generate by staking your nfts and for contributing and winning in these polls now these all have different pot sizes attached to them so this first one that we voted on for instance you could see that i voted for floor below five the entire pot size is 1000 cubists so the the entire pool everybody that wins this is going to have their slice their <laughs> divided 1000 cubists between everybody that participated and it's dynamically changed by the amount of multipliers that everybody has based on their held NFTs. So it's a really, really cool system. And now it actually goes into the betting as well. So the betting protocol lives on the website as well as the staking functions and stuff like that. You can stake your NFTs by clicking on staking. If you already have them staked, you can see them here. You can claim the C that it generates or the Cubis tokens that it generates from having these staked so that you can use them later on or sell them on the market or whatever the case may be. Uh, you can also go to the betting protocol. Now, going to the predictions tool allows you to see the open games, like the one for primates right now, as well as the closed games that have already been done. Now, this is not the same predictions as in the Discord. The Discord predictions that I just participated in are free. If you're a member, you can do it. If you win, you get Cubist tokens. If you don't, you don't get anything, but it doesn't cost you anything. The betting protocol, on the other hand, you have to risk tokens if you wanna take advantage of it. Now, I could click on this open game, for instance, and it says there's a supply of 10,000, the mint price is for Solana, Discord thread, Cubist thread, holders only. Will the floor of primates be at or above or below five Solana one hour after the start of the last mint? Okay. And then you can, or transaction, 
This prediction is for five Solana, not the mint price. They very, very clear with that. If the collection is listed early on secondary, the timer starts at the beginning of the final mint. The final price will be calculated as an average in the time window of 10 minutes before the target. See terms and conditions for more details. And if you look at the terms and conditions, it talks about all the dynamics of this bet. Because sometimes unpredictable things happen and they try to balance it as much as possible. So if I want to bet, I have to accept these terms and conditions and you can click any of the buttons here to actually contribute towards this bet as long as it's still open. It says that it closes today at 1 p.m. my time. So I have uh, about an hour and a half here from this time to either add to my bet or whatever. So you can bet up or down. You can see the bets and you can see how much you win. If I wanted to bet one Solana down right now and I won based on the current numbers, I would get 1.52 Solana back. I know the print is kind of small, especially if you're watching this on a phone, but that's what it says. So you can look in to a bunch of the different ones that have gone and, and already passed. And like Bubble Goose Ballers, Solana Price itself, Just Ape, Haunted Goats, Hello Panther, Wobble Bug, a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of these were already done. Now you could use this knowledge, just being able to look at these predictions and see how people feel and use it to say bet. You know what I mean? You could bet your Solana or you can actually say, man, if 90% of the community thinks that Primates is going to fail, why would I even invest in it, even if I'm whitelisted? Okay. Another interesting thing, which there was a thread that was written about this was hedging your bet, hedging your mint with a bet. So let's say you're whitelisted for Primates and you say to yourself, I want to mint this. It's going to cost five Solana. If you're thinking that you're going to mint it, you're looking for a price increase, right? You're looking to say, well, I think it's going to be, I think I'll be able to sell it for seven Solana. Now, outside of the fees for actually trading it on secondary market, what if you were to bet against it in this protocol? What if you were to say, I'm going to bet five Solana that this does not get past the value of it, okay? So you would win Solana based on the bet if the, the actual mint did not go in your favor. And if the mint did go in your favor, you would lose that bet, but you would have the profits to gain from actually selling your NFT at a premium. So it's a really, really interesting dynamic that you can use to hedge your bets against that. And there's a really, really cool article written in the Discord by a user named Tom QH. Now he's one of the silver contributors here, which means he's posted quite a few successful articles. And you can see here that he talks about reducing your downside loss limit, retaining your upside and adjusting target prices that put you into profit. And even though I referenced this before, I did not react yet with a C and I'm going to give him one right now. Sometimes it's relevant based on how old it is. So sometimes I'll have to comment on other pieces of the thread, but all in all, it just gives you an idea of how this community operates and the different functions that you could do with the betting, with the alpha and with the article writing. And if you jump into the market, you'll see that the floor price for the Cubis NFTs are currently sitting around seven Solana. I happened to get a couple pretty early on before there was a big spike and they had went up to 13 actually at one point, but I ended up getting a couple around six and I got a couple around 10. So all in all, I have a lot of faith in this project long term. I'm getting a ton of value from the community. I'm really, really enjoying writing these articles actually and reading them in this nice format. In the morning when I have my coffee, I just go through some of the articles, look at some of the mints I might be interested in, pick up some knowledge and some alpha from some other community members. And it is very, very enjoyable experience so far. I encourage you if you liked the type of stuff that you saw in this video, pick up an NFT, check it out, contribute to the community a little bit, and maybe you'll get some value from it just like I did. Not financial advice, just advice, guys. I hope you got some value and some enjoyment from the video, you guys. If you like Cubist Collective and what you saw today and you want to find out more, you can go in the link in the description and click on it. Make sure not to click any scam links in the comments or anything, you guys. There's a lot of scammers, people impersonating me, people trying to WhatsApp you about the investment advice, all of this stuff. Don't fall for any of that stuff. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Other than that, as far as the comments, you can leave me your thoughts as well. Tell me what you think about Cubist Collective. If you're from the Cubist Collective, I'd love to hear from you as well. I'll see you in the comments and around the Discord. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Ulgen signing off, and we'll see you next time.